Hello, everyone. Greetings. Hey, this is Payman Lorenzo, your host for the Leaders of Heart podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, my good friend, Megla. I don't know how I can uh, describe her in one sentence because we could do an entire show just describing her. Uh, she's many things. She's most and foremost, she's a good friend. And then she's also the queen of uh, sourcing from India, as well as the, the host of one of the, the, the biggest uh, um, e-commerce and Amazon um, conferences in, in Asia and Hong Kong, Global Sources. And she has, uh, she's doing a lot of great things that we're going to talk about. And, and most importantly, she is not only a friend, but also a tremendous uh, lady, a tremendous lady, uh, leader, sorry, with a heart. And that's what we're going to cover most of uh, today's uh, podcast about. Megla, my friend, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Payman. That was such a lovely introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for uh for agreeing to be here. It's an honor to have you here because you're one of the person that I admire the most because you're doing a lot of good things for the community, for the e-commerce and uh, community. Uh, and uh, especially not only what you've been doing before with uh, Global Sources, but especially now that you're doing, you're opening a whole new world, a whole new universe to, to people, which is uh, into the amazing unlimited potential of what uh, India has to offer. So that's going to be something we're going to talk about, but mostly this is about about you, about uh, what about uh, about what cause you mostly passionate about. So let's start first with people that don't know you. Who is Megla? You so can start Megla from is whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> okay, oh my god, that's such a tough question. You took me off guard over there. So I know. Yeah, who <laughs> Who am I? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so I think, um, you know, I, I, I think that I am somebody who, um, first of all, I'm a mom. I, I, I really think that's the most important responsibility Absolutely. and role that I have as of now. So um, that's my mission and my why, <laughs> my son. Um, and then secondly, I also want to be seen as somebody who can um, create sort of an impact in different ways, doesn't have to be impact in, you know, like if, uh, impacting a large number of people in society or, or anything like that, but just somebody who wants to impact lives, change lives, make a difference in people's lives in, if, even if it's in a small way, you know, even if it's like just inspiring somebody or, um, you know, helping somebody with, with something. So that's what I want to be known for. And that's what drives me. And that's what makes me smile. And, uh, and, and that's, that's what makes me happy that, okay, I helped this person a little bit and, um, you know, I, I provided this information to so-and-so person and that helped him with his business. So I really feel a very, you know, contented and, and satisfied when I, when I, when I realized that, oh, okay, somebody was, somebody found benefit or somebody found something that I was doing useful. That's amazing. And that's going to be a recurring theme of this podcast. But before we jump into that, I want to ask you about something that probably, I don't think you've ever been, I mean, I'm not going to say ever, but it's probably a question that you haven't been asked a lot. And I'm quite curious to know the answer personally, but also a lot of people will be interested. In. So, you know, when we, when we are kids, everybody asks us, so what do you want to do when you, when you become, uh, when you grow up? So going back to you, to you, to when you were a kid, when, when you, your, your parents, your teachers, your friends, family were asking, so Megla, what do you want to do when you become uh, older? What was your answer? I wanted to be an air hostess. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because, uh, first of all, I had a lot of influence in my family, like uh, my grandparents, uh, I mean, my grandfather and my mother, my aunts, a lot of people were in the airlines industry. Mm. And uh, they were, you know, they were working as ground staff. None of them were, was working as a an air hostess, but I just found it very appealing, especially in terms of travel. So, you know, the, the, the idea that I could travel to all of these different countries and, you know, see the world um, just, just, you know, during my work that I found that very appealing. And right from the beginning, I really did want to travel, like right from childhood, I wanted to travel the world and see different places. And that's still a, a dream that is um, <laughs> unfinished for me. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's what I wanted to be. And then um, I did try. I did apply for um, the job of an air hostess at one airline, but I didn't get through. So then my next option, and this was something that I also had in mind growing up, is that I wanted to be in journalism and uh -huh. I wanted to be a writer. And so I took option B and I joined a newspaper where I was uh, the, the copy editor at the newspaper. Nice. And so that's how I started my career. 
Okay. And so uh, how did you transition from being a journalist into being the, the businesswoman that you are now? Oh my God, that's such a long story, <laughs> but I'm going to just, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to describe it in, a, in, in like a couple of minutes. So I started working in India with this newspaper. And then um, from there, I moved to Global Sources in India. At that time, they had an editorial uh, operation and an editorial team in India, but it wasn't like an office as such. It was just based on, um, you know, they had one India bureau chief at home, working from home, and then they had a string of freelancers. So I joined Global Sources as uh, India Bureau Chief, and I was managing their um, editorial operations and their freelancers. So we were basically writing reports on how products are manufactured in India at that time. And this was way back in the year 2000, 20 years ago. And uh, so we were visiting factories and talking to suppliers, manufacturers, and then writing these reports. So there was about 10 freelancers all over the country and I was managing, you know, the, the freelancers and global sources, actually, I don't know if people know, I mean, they're of course a B2B sourcing platform, but they also uh, used to publish magazines. In fact, they still do, but the focus is more on online and exhibitions now, but at that time, their focus was uh, on these catalogs and magazines. And then, you know, we had like proper editorial cover stories for all of the magazines. And there was an editorial office in Manila in the Philippines. Wow. So very editorial focused at that time. And then I worked in India for about three years and there was an opportunity in Global Sources in the Manila office. So I relocated there. And um, once I was there, that's when I started traveling to China. 2003 was the first time I had traveled to China to visit factories. And over there, I was working on these uh, research reports called China Sourcing Reports. And again, we were visiting factories and writing about how products are manufactured and writing company profiles and things like that. And those research reports were sold for like five, six hundred dollars to overseas wow. buyers, importers who want to source products from China. So I did that for quite a few years and I moved to uh, China in 2006 and I was there for about nine years. I was doing lots of different things, mostly focused on the research reports. But then, you know, social media and, and all of this and online sourcing sort of became very popular. And uh, so my role sh sort of shifted to social media and more of content marketing. So um, I then set up a team for content marketing in Global Sources and I was managing all of their social media accounts and everything. And at the same time, I was also working on different projects uh, with suppliers, with buyers um, at Global Sources. And yeah, 2015, I moved to Singapore and that was mostly because of personal reasons. Uh, Global Sources had an office in Singapore at that time. And uh, I, I asked to relocate because of my son's education, because my son had started going to school and it was very difficult to, um, you know, to get a good education in China. Sure. So that's why I asked to move to Singapore. And then, um, yeah, I worked in Singapore for a few years. And then 2018, Global Sources decided to uh, relocate their Singapore office to Hong Kong. And so at that point, I was left with a choice. Should I continue my corporate career and look for another job or should I start my own venture? And then I decided to start my own venture because that's something that I really wanted to do for a long time. And so I, I thought this was an opportunity to do something of my own because, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So it's now or never. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I ended up starting my own business. And I started with India Sourcing Trip because at that time I saw this as an opportunity because there was this trade war between China and the US and there were a lot of Amazon e-commerce sellers who were looking for alternative sourcing markets and said, so that's how the journey to, um, you know, for India sourcing trip started. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, I remember that you were doing that. So can you, for those of people that are not familiar, what what's what are the main attraction for someone that's looking to, to source a product? What are the attractions what are the, the advantages of sourcing from India versus China? And what kind of product would you recommend for people to source from? Give us a, a general overview. Of course, we're not going to get into the neat and gritty because you've you covered that tremendously and extensively in your own Facebook page and uh, as well as in your on your website. But just give us like the uh, the over, general overview of that. Yes. So first of all, you know, China is, of course, the world's factory. <laughs> China can produce anything and everything. And in China, they say it's not a matter of if it is produced or not, it's a matter of how much can it be produced for. So, you know, I, I feel that China is currently, in, it, it has a lot of advantages and benefits. 
However, at the same time, I feel that um, you know production costs are rising in China, and there are other issues because of which people are looking for alternative markets. And India is the number one, um, you know, best alternative to China that there is as of now. And um, India, of course, does not manufacture all types of products, so there are certain categories that India is better in. So, for example, um, wood, that's quite competitively priced in India, as well as there's a lot of workmanship and, and good artisans that can make really beautiful products out of wood. Then another category is metal. So um, again, India has a lot of uh, a rich history of these handicraft kind of products like in metal, um, wood, glass, ceramic. And what's happened is that there are, there are a lot of these exporters, manufacturer exporters who have taken these art forms or these handicraft um, you know, skills, and they have, they're starting to produce these products at scale for export. So it's sort of a combination of the local skills that are available from these artisans, and then the, the expertise of the manufacturers and the exporters who, who understand what are the design requirements and the you know, product quality requirements of overseas markets. And so they work with these artisans to produce products for um, the overseas market. So that's one category that's quite popular. And um, a lot of Amazon sellers are finding really good success with the, these categories, handmade um, wooden and metal kind of products. And then the other big category from India is cotton. So India is um, the, the first or second largest um, manufacturer or producer of cotton in the world. Some years wow. it's first, some years it's second. Um, I think last year it was number one. And um, so therefore there's a huge industry, huge manufacturing of cotton based textiles and fabrics. So for example, there's uh, apparel, furnishings, you know, all sorts of textile based products. So that's another huge, huge category. And there are lots of different products available. So there's knitted and woven fabrics available. And um, uh, for knitted fabrics, you know, there are things like socks and t-shirts and, and all of those things. And then another big advantage that India has for these fabrics is that there's a lot of local and very indigenous styles of producing fabric. So in terms of the weaving or, um, you know, in, in terms of the embellishments that are used, for example, there's hand embroidery, there's different types of embroidery. In fact, if you look, uh, it, I, I actually have an ebook where I talk about um, sourcing from India, and there's a map in that ebook that has all of the different fabrics that are actually produced in India. And um, so that's another big advantage. You know, there's this huge a variety of fabrics that people can source from India. Another big category and emerging category from India is eco-friendly products. Yes. So there's a lot of focus on things like plant-based leathers or materials, you know, like cactus leather and, and all, all of those things. And then there's also a lot of focus on um, producing disposable items that are eco-friendly and biodegradable. So for example, disposable dinnerware made from sugarcane waste or disposable dinnerware made from areca palm leaves, those kinds of things. There's also a lot of focus on upcycling and recycling uh, products. So yeah, eco-friendly products is another good category to consider. And there are other things like genuine leather. So there's, uh, India is in fact, one of the leading exporters of leather garments after Italy. So number one is Italy, wow. second India, and then third China. So a lot of beautiful designs coming out. So India is really strong with designs in terms of you know, fabrics and, and home decor items as well. So yeah, those are some of the categories that I think people can consider. In terms of advantages, I would say one advantage specifically for Amazon e-commerce sellers is that of course you can find a lot of unique products that are not found in China. So that, that will help you differentiate from everybody else. You know, While everybody else is zigging, you can zag. <laughs> Okay. And um, that's one of the ways to differentiate your products. And then another thing is that many of the suppliers in India, they actually accept smaller MOQs. And that's really good if you're just starting out or if you have a small budget, because in China, usually, you know, products are mass produced. And so their MOQs are pretty high. So that's something else. And then communication can be easier in India Big because time. a lot of the suppliers, <laughs> yeah. So suppliers speak in English and you can have Zoom calls with them and you feel that, you know, it's easier to, um, get your ideas across to them. Absolutely. I mean, you, you said it all, and I will just uh, quickly chip in my own experience. I lived in China for four years. I've been to countless factories, and all the, the number one struggle each time was communication, even with an actual translator, because a lot can be lost in trans translation. But, uh, you know, I'm currently 
developing a product with a very exciting company in India that specializes in in, uh, in, in, in vegan leathers. And uh, the difference between dealing with them versus dealing with Chinese is that night and day with the Chinese, uh, everything was done on WeChat and and on uh, you know. I write in English and they write in Chinese and, and translate and all that. It would something a very simple conversation would take like drag on for two, three weeks. Whereas with them, we just hop on a quick uh, uh, Zoom call and talk just free. Like they speak perfect English. Like there's absolutely zero uh, language barrier. And they've been very uh, helpful, very, uh, I mean, I've, my experience so far has been absolutely nothing short of amazing. And I'm super excited for my, my project. I'm going to be running a crowdfunding. I'm blessed with that. And I can't thank you enough, Megla, because uh, you play a big role in that. I would say a, a good chunk of, of that, of my success will be due to you because you were the one that opened my eyes to India and connected me with the right partner. Because as you know it, finding the right factory, the right partner is half of the battle in, in making a good product and having a successful product because you can spend and waste a lot of time just, you know, going from factory to factory and, you know, wasting money and, having a miscommunication, but, but here, because there's no communication barrier. And, and not only that, another, another thing that I love about what you're doing is that you invite supply, I mean, suppliers on, on, on your, on your, on your show, you pre vet them, they, they do a presentation. Uh, and this way we, we dealing directly with reliable, trustworthy suppliers, as opposed to just shooting a, in the dark, going on Alibaba and not sure whether they can be actually, you know, trust it or not so that's another tremendous you know service you're doing megla you, you're a gift from god seriously and i mean it so uh so yeah so again my experience has been nothing short of amazing uh when it comes to uh to to uh working with a firm in india and even one of our students from our amazon academy you know her sandra she was looking for uh, for uh suppliers she has an idea for a leather product uh she, she made a quick post in your group she had uh one suggestion right away and then i referred her to, to the same company i'm dealing with and she was able to to get on a call with them right away talk with them she was absolutely blown away because before that she spent like at least a month just you know going from supplier to supply on alibaba and not going anywhere because of a language barrier but there now she's she's already in the process of having her product already made by the factory in india so things were just going like this so uh, that's a personal first-hand experience of dealing with India versus China. And as I said, I lived in China for four years. I went to countless factories. So I know what's, what to deal with when it comes to the Chinese factory. Not saying the Chinese are not able to, but the communication barrier can be a major hurdle, especially for someone starting you or someone that just wants to get things done right the first time. So uh, that's a major, major, major advantage of India. And plus, as you said, in India, you have a lot of option when it comes to to, uh, to, to new designs, unique, because they use, as opposed to, from what I remember from, from the webinar you did for us last summer, in China, they mass produce using artificial materials. In India, they hand make uh, using uh, natural materials. And because it's handmade, MOQs are quite low and, and they're very, uh, and not only that, but because it's handmade by actual people, that can also be part of, of, of a beautiful branding. You can build a nice branding story around it. You can, and that's one of the things I'm going to be doing with my, with my my own um, company I'm dealing with in India. I asked them, I want them, I want you guys to send me a picture, videos of the actual person working on my product, even a small uh, bio, like a one or two sentence. Hey, my name is so and so. I've been working here for the past ten years. I I, I handcraft this product with love and care, and, and you attach that inside your package, that's going to blow people away. But that's something that, sure, you could do it in China, but it would be much, much more difficult to do it in China than in India. So, so yeah, I mean, I can talk in, on and on. I mean, I'm probably as big as a, as a fan of India. I mean, you converted me now. So uh, I'm all in. So yeah, thank I you think, very much for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, I mean, this, this, this brings me so much joy. I mean, Payman, you asked me in the beginning, you know, what, what am I about? I mean, this, this is what I'm about. And I really, I'm so happy to hear all of this. And, um, you know, just one thought that came across my mind as you were speaking and, and you were talking about this. So, you know, why is it that I find joy in facilitating this or helping people or connecting people or making an impact? And it's, this is a bit of a, a personal story, but I'm, I'm okay to share it now. So in, in 2017, I lost my husband to a heart attack. Um, yeah. So at that time, I realized that 
you know, life is uh, very fragile and life is unpredictable. Life is, you have to expect the unexpected, but what is life about after all? I mean, we are not going to take anything with us. We came empty handed. We're going to go empty handed. What we are leaving is our legacy. You know, after my husband passed away, it was of course a very difficult time. And then, you know, I was thinking, what do we, what has he left behind? He has left behind his legacy and how he has impacted people and, and how he is, um, you know, the positive things that he has done in, in his life. It's not about how much money he made or how, what kind of cars he drove. That's not what people are going to remember. It's the legacy. And so, you know, after that, I think my perspective has changed a little bit on life and I have become more sort of open and, and giving and I'm like, okay, life is all about helping other people and I think when you help other people with an open heart, it comes back to you. Big so time. it's, yeah. I mean, of course I have to run a business. I have to earn money. I have to, you know, <laughs> put food on the table and everything. But at the same time, I feel that it's more important to leave a legacy than have a big you know, bank account. Absolutely. And as you said, I couldn't agree more with you. It's all about the impact, you know, yeah. it's, it's not about how much money you make, whatever it's how much impact you're going to be yeah. making because just like you said it's all about the legacy i read uh, i heard something not long ago that says how do you want to be remembered and that's a question that really made me think so how do i want to be remembered and when i thought about it i said well i want to be remembered as someone that's always you know here reliable to help people and once i you know said so what can i do now to really make that happen and it was obvious for me i asked what do i enjoy the most ever since i was a kid i enjoyed the most was helping people Helping those, even I remember when I was in kindergarten, my parents would bring me sometimes some snacks and there was a kid beside me. I mean, usually one or two kids that didn't have anything. Without even thinking, I'm talking when I was like four or five years old, I would gladly share whatever my parents would bring to me with them. So, and, and even anytime when I help someone, you know, the most gratifying f- feeling in the world is when you help someone and you see the, the gratitude in their eyes and, and, and the smile, there's yeah. it touches you so deeply it's almost like like orgasm for the soul and in a so much deeper way that nothing else it almost even now talking about it i don't know if you can see it, i'm getting goosebumps so you see that's how how, how uh, gratifying how how amazing it is when you get that thing so that's a perfect segue so now so you, you mentioned briefly that you're doing now uh india sourcing trip which were kind of affected by what's going on in the world right now but you, you mentioned that while you were there, you did something that was absolutely amazing. Um, I want you to talk about that. You said you sponsored kids for uh, uh, during your trip. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, when I started this venture, I mean, I spent about six to nine months preparing for India sourcing trip and, you know, doing a lot of research and making a business plan and marketing and everything before I actually launched it. And at that time, when I was thinking about what exactly is the mission of my business, um, you know, one of the things that really stood out for me was I want to give back and I want to do something for society. Whatever business I do, I do want to have, you know, some portion of of my revenue to go to, you know, helping people. So there's this school in India. It's actually a nonprofit school. It's it's free for poor kids and it's run by an organization called Dipalaya. And I've been associated with this organization for a few years now, even before the trip, I was sponsoring a few kids over there. And um, um, it's just, I mean, you don't have to pay a lot. It's just a hundred dollars per year, per year, not per month, per year (laughs) to get their books. (laughs) It's just basically, you know, they they use that to get their books and everything. And, um, you know, you can actually impact the life of a child and you can help them get an education and come out of poverty. So that is a huge you know, impact that you can sort of make. And um, what this organization does is that they send you an update on the child's progress. And so maybe a report card, or sometimes the child can also send you, you know, greeting cards. Of course, they don't encourage you to meet with the child directly because um, you know, there are privacy concerns and everything. But if you do visit India, then you can actually visit the school and you can, um, you know, meet with all of the kids there. So when we went to India, um, first of all, what I did was for all of the India sourcing trip attendees, um, out of all of the fee that they had paid for for the trip, 
I allocated $100 for each of them to sponsor one child in that school. So Beautiful. there were about 35, 40 India trip, um, attendees and they sponsored, each of them sponsored one child. And then I paid for one year of sponsorship. And then after a year, they can you know, decide to whether they want to continue sponsoring the child or they want to discontinue. So, and then the other thing that we did was we visited the school. So there were a couple of us, we had arrived early uh, in Delhi for the trip. And then we spent about two hours in that school. And it was just so amazing to see those kids' eyes light up, <laughs> you know, when they saw all of these guests. And we were, you know, we were welcomed by the kids. You know, in India, there's this traditional way of welcoming where they have this plate. It's a metal plate. And they put different things on the plate, like a little, um, you know, candle. It's, it's called a dia, actually, but it's sort of a little, you know, thing with a flame and then flowers. And, and uh, they also put a tikka on the forehead. So there were these little kids standing at the entrance with all of these plates, you know, to welcome us in the school. And one by one, they welcomed all of us. And then they also made some gifts for us. So they hand painted um, a, a greeting card for all of us. And then they also made like a, a wind chime for me specifically, they gave that to me. So it was just so amazing to see all of that. And in that school, you know, it's, it's so amazing. They've got, it's a very simple and basic infrastructure, of course but they've got good teachers and um, they've got a school for younger kids. They've got a separate class for um, differently abled kids. So all of the differently abled kids are also uh, you know, taught over there. And then they've also got a section for older people who want to maybe learn some skills like computers or uh, you know, like software development. I mean, maybe not software development, but just basic computer skills or, or you know, designing, Photoshop, those kinds of things. So they're also training you know, older teenagers and mm -hmm. maybe young adults on those types of actual skills that they can use for um, getting jobs later in life. So yeah, I'm very passionate about this sort of thing because I strongly believe that in order for society to be uplifted and people to come out of poverty, they have to be educated so that they can come out of the cycle of poverty. Because what happens is if you're born into a poor family, then you sort of end up in that cycle because you, you can't get an education because you have to help to, you know, you have to start working at an early age to support the family. And it's just like an endless cycle. So I think education is the only thing that can help people come out of the cycle of poverty. I couldn't agree more with you. Absolutely. And we have a similar uh, philosophy for me, as I said, the, uh, this podcast is called Leaders with a Heart. My vision is to, to create a platform to bring other enlightened, uh, enlightened entrepreneurs and leaders with a heart to share their story, talk about their, their, um, their, 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 their cause they're most passionate about so that week together we can inspire other entrepreneurs. For example, me and you talking, someone's going to be listening. To, if me and you, we can influence even one other entrepreneur to yeah. do the same to help someone. And then they went on to, to go, go on to inspire another and so on and so forth. And before long, we would have a much different environment. The world would be much more positive, which what the world needs a, a lot right now. Because I have a firm belief that we as entrepreneurs, we have a, a duty and a responsibility to do good uh, with our businesses. Not only because it's a right, first of all, because it's a right thing to do as a human being, but also because doing good it's actually pretty damn good for business because people want to do business with, with a business that is cost driven. Like there was a, a stat, by a survey, uh, research conducted by Deloitte that with all things, all perks uh, being equal, 74% of Americans would rather work for a company that is cost driven versus one that is just profit driven because people want to feel, you know, people want to, most people want to do good, but they're not able to do either because they don't have the money or, or most importantly, because they don't know how or where to start. But if me and you, we can allow them to do good to the purchase of our products and services, we empower them. We give them the, this empowerment to do good. And, and, not only, and by doing that, not only they will feel amazing by buying our product, but they will become our, uh, you know, not only just mere one-time customers, but they will become... Uh, you know, loyal, avid fan, even evangelical fans, they will do our marketing for us. Because when you buy from a company that, hey, this company is not only when you buy, for example, for a product, my product, when you, when you know that product, they're going to go in and give um, a pair of eyeglasses to someone in need of when you join uh, India Sourcing Trip, they will, um, for example, uh, sponsor a kid for, uh, education for one year they will feel, wow, that's an amazing company. And they will keep on talking about you. So it's a win, win, win in every, every way. And, 
and and that's the only way to go as far as I'm concerned. And and I'm surprised that not not many other businesses do not do that. And that represents a tremendous opportunity for us because, as you know it, and even that was part of our our. Amazon Academy, it's all about differentiation, multiple layers of differentiation. One way to differentiate, as you said yourself, is to source from where others are not sourcing, from, from India. Another way would be to add a cost to your product, to your business. So it's all about differentiating. And if you do that, it's, it's a win-win. And one mistake that a lot of people, I mean, some business people can make is how, if I have to give a product for free, if I have to spend money to, to donate or whatever, that's extra, extra expenses. I don't look at it as expense. I look at it as as the best investment, I mean, the best amount of money uh, and, uh, spent as far as the, uh, the ROI is, is concerned because the ROI you get from giving, whether it's a unit of your product or sponsoring a child or whatever, you get that tenfold back, not only in terms of goodwill, in terms of karma, but also because when people see that, they will do your own marketing for you. They will not be just another customer, or another client. They will be raving evangelical fans. And that's something that's, priceless not only for you as a business person but also for, for your customers they will they will they will love buying from you because they know that each time they buy from you not only they look amazing using your product or going on your trip or whatever but also they actually doing an impact as i said earlier a lot of people want to do good but they don't know how to do it or where to do it but if me and you we can allow them to do good to the purchase of our product and services we are empowering them to do so and for that they will they will be grateful for us so that's my philosophy in, in a nutshell. Again, I'm super passionate about that. I can talk for hours about that. So I'm going to shut up because if I, once I'm go, going, cannot stop me. So, <laughs> Yeah, but, but you're absolutely right. And I totally agree with you 100%. I mean, um, do business and do good, right? That's what I think. I mean, that's what my motto is. And um, I think a lot of other entrepreneurs should do that as well. Um, I strongly believe in karma as well. So, you know, what goes around comes around. So, yeah. That's my that's my uh, motto as well. My motto for my product, I told you earlier, I'm not going to reveal it here, but I'm going to reveal it in the next few few days, is look fabulous and feel fantastic. Look fabulous because the product, I'm going to send it to you the pictures after. Absolutely stunning. But also when you wear it, not only you look fabulous, but you will look fantastic. You'll feel fantastic because by you wearing that product, you know that someone is going to that, that need it but cannot afford it is going to receive a pair of eyeglasses so they can see clearly and they can have the, the, the gift of vision me and you, we can take for granted that we're able to see, but for someone that cannot see or sees, you know, not very good. Once, for example, I need glasses. If I can wear, I can see correctly. But with that, it's a different world that opens up for us. And if if I can allow someone to be able to to to, to see clearly just by purchasing a product, I will buy not just one. I will buy five, six of that, and I will refer people. So as I said, it's not only the good it's not only the right thing to do as a human being but also it's pretty damn good for business too once people understand that and as soon as people can realize that the better they will be off the better their business will be there but also the better most importantly the karmic balance will be i mean they will get so much more positive karma for them i also believe strongly in, in karma yeah it's a win 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 i mean there's uh, there's no downside to doing this <laughs> Absolutely. And just one last thing on that thing. I, I read uh, not long ago a, a quote that really, you know, shook me. It said, the two most important dates in, in our lives are first, one, the first one is when we are born. And the second, when we find out why we are born, why we are here. So when, when you realize, and, and that's something that unfortunately not a lot of us get to do it. But th those of us that are lucky enough to realize why we are here, our life completely becomes different. Like for me, I've been coasting like almost like a zombie for the past you know, a few decades. And finally, when I realized, hey, it's not just about me, it's about helping, about the impact. Now I have so much more drive and so much more, you know, desire, passion that I never had before. Yeah, you're right. And I feel exactly the same way. So I was in, you know, a corporate career for 20 years and I loved my job and I was passionate at that time. But now that I've started this business and I have a different, you know, objective and mission, the passion is just at a different level altogether. It, it doesn't feel like work at all. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm working like 10, 12 hours a day, even more sometimes. And it just, um, yeah, I don't know where the energy comes from, but it's just there. <laughs> it comes from the universe, from God, from whatever you want to call yeah. it, from your, from your yeah. purpose. Um, how, how, how big do you want to take this, 
this uh, this cause that you're passionate about, which is uh, sponsoring kids' education in India. What's your ultimate vision with that? So, I mean, my ultimate vision with that is to, of course, be able to sponsor as many kids as possible. I mean, the sky's the limit. So I don't want to have, uh, you know, an end goal or, or anything like that in mind. But I, my vision is to just have as huge an impact as possible and just help be able to help as many people as possible with um, you know with this because i strongly believe um you know the organization is is really well managed and uh, they're doing a really good job so i mean i could go and you know start up my own organization for example um, but why should i do that when there's somebody else who's already doing such a great job and they've got the infrastructure and you know the connections in the community as well so i would rather support them as much as possible um so yeah and the sky's the limit for that especially in a country like india with a massive need yeah. for that absolutely and anyways and, and yeah. even me as i said i'm gonna be you know giving my my goal is as i said for this product is not to sell say a thousand two thousand five thousand units but to instead is to be able to to provide at least five thousand people with a, with a, with a, with a, with a gift of, of seeing properly that's my goal for the mm -hmm. first two to three years I don't look at the number of sales I look at the number of impacts for me it's yeah. not about you know I I, I hired a uh, a private mentor uh, a few months ago very successful uh, businessman is also uh, of Indian uh, uh, background Akbar Sheikh is an eight-figure seller from I mean business person from the click funnels and uh, community and is motto is make more give more that's exactly it okay. make more give more and so yeah. before applying for his uh, for his uh, getting into his program he asked me so what's your why what do you want to get in do you want to is it to to buy a lambo and mansion i said no my, my goal is not to make a million dollars my goal is to give away a million dollars and for me to give away a million dollars i need to make three million dollars yeah and when you hear that say you know what you're in get in bro so uh, that's, <laughs> because that that's me it's not about me it's i don't care about the latest toys or whatever it's all about as i said it's all about the impact so megla um let's uh, i'm gonna ask you a few uh, fun question let's say i mean you're a very uh, successful business lady you have your own podcast let's say that your next uh, guest in your podcast is going to be the most special person in your life which is yourself Imagine you're interviewing yourself. What would be the first question you would ask yourself? I would ask myself. Yeah, go ahead. What? The, the first question and the question you want to ask yourself the most. That's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. The most. Oh, my gosh. That's a difficult question. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess what I want to ask myself is um, I want to ask, you know, why did you make certain choices <laughs> that you did? when you were you know, way younger. Sometimes I question myself <laughs> with the choices that I made and I won't, won't go into the choices and everything, but yeah, I think that's what I would ask myself. Um, what did you think about those choices that you had made at that time? And um, what could you have done differently? And that's a perfect segue. I mean, you just read my mind and my next question, my next one is, let's say you're, you, you're lucky enough to have a time travel machine. Let's, and, and let's say you're sitting and face to face with with your 18 year old version what would be the number one piece of advice you would give to, to yourself when you were 18 with all the knowledge experience you have now well i think it's very clear i would have told myself that hey impact is the most important thing i mean that's something that i realized way later in life and after a huge you know incident um, after, after a huge loss but i would i think tell myself at that time that everything else will fall in place, but just follow your passion, follow the impact and, and make sure that you are, you know, helping as many people. And that's where the real, uh, you know, I think that's what's, you know, the, the meaning of life is, is that's, that's how you can find the meaning of life for yourself um, by really creating an impact and, and influencing, you know, lives. Okay. What was, um, in the past 12 months, what was the, the biggest lesson, the biggest, the biggest impact that, that something had on your life, whether it's a, from a book that you learn, whether it's from a book, from a podcast, from, from a mentor, from anyone that what would be the, uh, the biggest, the biggest lesson, the biggest impact that, that you learned that has positively impacted both your life as well as your business. 
I think the last 12 months have been so challenging <laughs> for for everybody wow. and and yeah for me specifically because I started a trips and events business right before the pandemic <laughs> completely like crashed <laughs> Wrong so I mean, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't get worse than this so i mean i have learned so many lessons in the last uh, 12 months i could write a book on that but i think the biggest Please lesson do. yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> let me come out of this first <laughs> we're still there <laughs> so but i think the biggest lesson that i've learned is that um you know relationships matter mm-hmm. and it's really important whether it's it's personal relationships or business relationships we can't do things on our own we have to um you know um we we need the support of our friends our family our um you know our ecosystem and people that we work with whether they're business partners clients customers whatever so i feel that there has been so much support for me from the amazon community from you know my partners margaret and kevin for example from other people that i work with like tim jordan and you know ritu java so all of these people have they've been given so much support so that's one of the biggest lessons that i've learned that when you're in tough times um then you know relationships really matter and it's people who are there to help you in those times are you know your real friends and um yeah that's what that's what's really really important relationships and and just those connections with people beautiful so now looking back you were at first very excited to start this new venture which is uh and your sourcing trip and then 2020 happened and your business you all completely crumbling what kept you going despite all of this when it was so easy for you so forget that i'm in the wrong but I, I i with all the business in the world i chose the only one that i should not have chosen I mean, what I what did I do to be to be cursed like that? So what made you go despite all of that? What kept you going? Yeah, it was super difficult, payment. I mean, I won't. Um, I'll, I'll say it really. You know, I haven't really talked about this publicly, but it was very very difficult, especially the beginning of 2020. Uh-huh. It was very challenging, very difficult, and I was almost like going into depression, and I didn't know what to do because. Mm -hmm. Um, that was going to be my main source of income, right? I mean, that was the whole business (laughs) and I had this whole plan. I had grand plans payment. So I was going to host a conference in Singapore. I was going to do other sourcing trips. I was going to do, uh, you know, not only sourcing trips uh, to the trade fairs, but also like factory visits and all those things. So I had big plans and, um, it was all around events and bringing people together. Um, but Yeah. So what really kept me going was, you know, first of all, always remembering my why, which is my Mm -hmm. son. And of course, for me, I don't have another choice because I am a single parent and he depends on me and I have to keep moving and keep, you know, doing things differently for his sake, because I have to give him a good life. So giving up is not an option. (laughs) So I think that's what really drove me just I, I, I kept rem- reminding myself of my why that, hey, I need to take care of myself. I need to do things better. I need to figure out a way to make this work. If option A doesn't work, I have to go to option B. If option B doesn't work, then C, D, E, F. You know, that's why there are 26 letters in the alphabet. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think, but that's what really kept me going, my why, which is my mm-hmm. son. Yeah, oh, that's a very powerful one. And um, speaking of your son, do you, do you see him going into your steps into the same business as you or are you going to let him give him complete carte blanche to do whatever he wants and yeah i mean i'm going to let him do whatever he wants but i mm. i have in, involved him in the business and um you know just to sort of make him uh think outside the box and be a little creative so i've given him the title of chief idea officer in the Beautiful. company and i've also created little business cards for him with wow. his name and his title And um, in fact, right before the pandemic, one of the things that we did was we went to an exhibition in London and we exhibited there for India Sourcing Trip. And he came with me and he was at the stall. It was a two day exhibition and he was at the stall and he was talking to people as well. (laughs) And, you know, he was helping me with things um, related to the business. So, yeah. I mean, that's the best thing when you, when you're building a business that you're passionate about, but also with the people that you care most about, there's nothing better in the world, you know, yeah. it's the most amazing feeling. That's wonderful. We can keep going for ages, but uh, we're going to wrap it up because you're busy and I'm also 
things that are here. But anyways, so if someone wants to, if people want to uh, to reach out to you, Megla, what's the best way to do so? So the best way, first of all, to learn more about what I'm doing and, uh, you know, sourcing from India is to join our Facebook group. So you can search for sourcing from India, Amazon FBA private label, join the group. There are lots of resources there, lots of webinars. There's an ebook that you'll also be sent once you join. And uh, if you, if people want to reach out to me, then they can message me on messenger. I think that's the easiest way. I'm pretty quick to okay. respond to messages and emails. I'll link up to both of them in the show notes. So, okay. And, um, Someone who wants, let's say someone is in a business and would like not as fulfilled as they could be, what tip would you give to them uh, in order to, for them to, to find more meaning, meaning in their business, to, 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 to transition the business from purely profit driven to more a cause impact driven? What tip or advice would you give to someone to, to feel more fulfilled, more alive in their business and to make the business more, much bigger than themselves and much, basically much more enjoyable? And what I would say is do a bit of soul searching and ask yourself, what are you really passionate about in terms of creating an impact? Is it, you know, and it's different for different people, right? For me, it's more of education because I do believe that education is a way out of poverty. Maybe somebody in, in the U.S., you know, they may have some other cause. For example, um, you know, maybe a loved one was affected by cancer or you know something else and they want to contribute and help other people in similar in a similar situation so it's really different for different people but i think once you do a bit of soul searching and try to figure out what is it that you really 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 care about in the world and then try to help uh, you know with that cause in any way that that's possible that's well said it's all about finding what what uh, what's important to you personally yes definitely yeah Thank you very much, Magla, for your time. It's been a, an immense pleasure as always talking to you. You're not only you're you're an amazing business lady, you're a great friend, but also most importantly, you're you're a you're a true leader with a heart, with a beautiful heart. So with this, I salute you. We salute you and wish you the best of uh, best of luck. And we'll catch up with you in a few months. Thank you. Yeah, very much, thank Magla. you. Yeah, thank you so much, Payman, for inviting me. And uh, you know, over the last, we've we met a couple of times in Hong Kong, of course, but we haven't really gotten to, you know, talk to each other and, and get to know each other. But over the last couple of months, I feel I've gotten to know you a little bit more. And there are a lot of things that, uh, you know, similar things that drive us. So I can't mm-hmm. wait to meet you again. And hopefully, we'll meet in India the next Absolutely. time at India Sourcing Trip. <laughs> and because I'm, I'm I'm building this beautiful project in India, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, in touch uh, a lot together, and we'll be talking a lot so uh, i'm looking forward to maybe even bringing you next time together with uh with with, with a lady from the firm i'm working in india together awesome. so we'll we'll see that so and especially once i get closer to the launch we'll definitely do something together maybe with your community and all that because it's all about not only helping make an impact but also bringing a piece of indian culture and tradition to the world so that's what it's yeah. all about so all right Absolutely. Megla, thank you very much yeah. have a great one Take care. Thanks, Damon. Bye. Cheers.